Well, I think that um, the issues are around decriminalization or legalization of marijuana are long overdue. We see that it has uh, benefits uh, on a medicinal level, which has been relatively well uh, documented. I think it's very, very interesting as well in the United States that you have kind of this cranky libertarian candidate who's gained so much traction in part over his position on those things. So I do think that uh, there's uh, progress on this point and a lot of people that have actually thought about it recognize that that would be beneficial and a lot of people are having their lives uh, seriously implicated by uh, 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 criminalization. Uh, you just sort of touched on Ron Paul. I'm assuming that's who the cranky candidate is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, he's sort of uh, been able to give us a case study of something that I think is rather new, where there is uh, an across uh, the board there are, there are intersecting issues from that that people on the left can agree with with people on the right and they just come from different philosophies. Um, foreign policy is one. Uh, legalization of drugs is one. I mean, is it a pipe dream to think that we can all get along eventually in politics? I think that's why his, uh, well, there are always going to be points of distinction amongst uh, people in politics, but I think that having a libertarian, you know, having a, a guy typically regarded as so right-wing, so right-wing to the point that he's libertarian, talking about these things does create a new dynamic around, uh, around issues. It kind of reminds me like uh, when Barry Goldwater, before he passed, supported Bill Clinton on gays in the military. It was so counterintuitive that it actually probably shook people up and forced a certain number of people to rethink their traditional positions. So yeah, I, I do think it's uh, helpful in that sense. Uh, one of the other issues that was popular with our online audience was mental health. Uh, just in the sense that we're not sure if we're just being uh, inefficient with our current programs or if we need more funding, or is it both? You have some background in this, so I'm just wondering if, uh, what your thoughts on mental health issues are. Well, I think that in healthcare, it's 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 common to turn everything into a funding issue, and I think we have to be careful about that. I think that for the renewal of Medicare, Medicare too, as I think about it, requires us as liberals to hold true to our values about equality of access, but to be open to different mo models of delivery. So I think I'm a little maybe cautious on taking the bite and saying, well, that's just about money. But I do think that um, a focus on mental health, I think Bob Ray has done an extraordinarily effective job on uh, this. And I think that it is a point of consensus in the country that this is an area where we have deficiency. Is that only about money? Money's always part of it, of course, resources. But I think it's also a reflection just on the complicated nature of society today. And uh, I think that uh, we see the bullying as a, as a bit of a proxy for this mental health issue and the impact that that has on kids and gay kids in particular, et cetera, is I don't think that we will go back and forget about this. I think that moving forward, there will be uh, uh, important changes made in the way that we deliver services to people that need them. I think it was Andrew Coyne who wrote today about the uh, the gay marriage uh, issue that's happening right now with, I think it was the federal attorneys, wrote a paragraph that was then interpreted as being that all the marriages that happened from uh, foreigners uh, from 2004 are now not technically legal. Is, was that issue sort of misreported or, or is that really the case or do you think they'd really go down that road and try to annul thousands of marriages? Well, even that they suggested that they would, even that they allowed for 36 hours or something like that, the people who had uh, in confidence come here to express their love for one another I thought that was a little bit to me like state sanctioned bullying I, I was uh, I was uh, uh, deeply offended by it if there was a concern about the validity of those marriages then it would seem to me that it would be the obligation at the time that it was occurring to say something not retroactively so for me I take the federal minister at his word uh, until I see otherwise that they intend to uh, fully back those marriages, if you will, to alter the law as required to make that the case. But I thought that um, that even the mere mention of it coming out of the Justice Department as they did uh, was a uh, was a, an act of uh, of uh, deviousness that uh, had so much human impact that it was uh, extremely disheartening. So. I, I take the minister at his word and I'm going to watch carefully to see that those changes are made in a way that uh, backs up uh, Canada's word in a certain sense. Yeah. And finally, and before I let you go, are we ever going to find that magic pill that sort of pierces the armor of apathy among young people to get them actually voting in higher numbers? Well, I think that, you know, they were just talking about that in there, the session with uh, Democrats. Obama obviously, uh, Obama obviously did that. I think it's two things that are necessary to to uh, to address it. 
Uh, one is actually making a political party and the processes around a political party interesting, relevant, and accessible. And that's why I believe in models of open membership and such. I think that the Liberal Party has become too clubby, and I think we're being, I think we're paying a price for that. And I don't think young, young people or anyone has a lot of tolerance for it. I think the apathy is actually not really just about young people. The second bit of it is you got to be relevant in the things that you're saying. You got to say them in a way that makes sense. You got to use the techniques, the tactics that speak to youth and others. Obviously, social media and the like. But I think it's very, very important what you say as well. And for the Liberal Party's relevance, they got to find a new way to say things. Okay. George Smithman, thank, thank you very much for joining the Red Dot Project. He only beat me by about 200,000 votes in the Toronto no, mayoral election. No, it was more like 288,000. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Who's he was counting, though, so that, that's a good sign for my career. Thanks very much. Take care, buddy. Appreciate it.